of key leadership and clinical staff members on payer guidelines. <sighs> yeah. Administrators tend to understand administration and finances. Your CFO probably wants to kill you at this stage um, in the game. Clinicians are specifically trained. We are taught in school that is unethical. I really want people to understand this. We are trained that it is unethical to consider reimbursements in treating a client. As a licensed clinical social worker, I have to take an oath to say that I cannot drop a client if they're unable to pay without a proper transition plan. This is what is ingrained in us. Clinicians are taught to think with their heart and do everything from the heart. Good luck running a business on your heart. <laughs> Not the way it works. So it's imperative that you teach the clinical staff members, doctors all the way on down, because we know doctors hate to document, doctors all the way on down to the clinical team what the payer expectations are. And you will get pushback. There's a lot of change management involved in this stage. They will tell you that that's not their goal. They need to make sure this client is clean. They don't want to discuss the money. That's your job. And your job is to explain to them if they want job security, they worry about the money. And that if they want to really treat the client, they worry about the money. Because if they cannot do their job in, in the lines of payer standards and guidelines, you shorten that client's time in treatment. You limit the number of days that a client can accept treatment, stay in treatment, and have more days away from using, more sober days, giving them a higher success rate when they finish treatment overall. Clinicians need to understand that their inability to incorporate payer guidelines directly impacts a client's outcome. And when put to them like that, they accept it. They're trained to think with their heart, bring it back to them on their heart. Because this is the truth. This is not you know, made up stuff. 